We're going to now discuss the world of Israeli basketball on the line right now. It's the sports rabbi, Josh Halkman. Josh, how are you doing out there? What's going on there, Ari? Uh, it's going great. Now, Maccabi Tel Aviv struggled their first round of the EuroLeague 16 opener. They dropped that in Athens. I want to first talk about Devin Smith because he was out. He, he was injured. Uh, I want to know if you think he could have played because it sounds like had he been in, that would have been the difference, and they maybe rested him a bit. So talk about the status of Devin Smith. Now, Devin Smith is a huge cog in the Maccabi Tel Aviv machine. And he was out for that game. If he plays, they probably win. They had been winning through three quarters. They were leading, and they fell apart in the fourth quarter. They got some terrific games from some of the other players, which is fantastic, especially Nate Linhart, who was ticketed to be out of here. He scores 18 points. So on one hand, Nate Linhart plays Devin Smith's position, and they did get 18 points out of that spot. However, Devin Smith is just such a professional player and such a good player that it was uh, really too bad that he couldn't play. And I'll tell you this, Ari, Devin Smith is a player that will play hurt. He probably really could not play. And he is a guy that will put all on the line. Without him last year, they would have never made it as far as they did, obviously winning the EuroLeague championship. And this year, especially in the EuroLeague competition, when they went 7-3 and in the first 10 games, he is one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, that the record was so good. Smith, of course, had an ankle sprain. He didn't play. You talked about Linhart had a great game. And I want to know also the Randall, uh, Tyus, they had some good games as well. Talk about their contributions. Did they look at themselves and say, we have to step up with Devin Smith being out of the lineup? That's definitely part of it. Alex Tyus also is starting to look like the player we remember from last year. He started to shake and bake and swish and dish and you know he's cooking with uh with jeremy pargo now it seems that they're reading each other better uh he's getting those alley-oop passes he's getting the ball near the rim he's playing to his strengths and that's exactly what they're going to need especially in this next round of the early competition brian randall some games he's not going to give you so many points but he gives the intangibles he gives you rebounds he gives you good defense he forces he forces shooters to change their shots. He is a very important player. And uh, it should be noted that Maccabi Tel Aviv also just brought in Joe Alexander right. from the D-League. And uh, he's only played three minutes so far. So it's going to be interesting to see how he's going to play throughout and what their plans are going to be for him. Uh, he also may be a big factor. Jake Cohen, we're going to have to see where his minutes will lie now with the addition of Joe Alexander. It should be a real interesting run here, Ari, the next uh, the next few weeks. I'm I'm very curious to see how the team's going to play. And they have a big game coming up against Partizan. Uh, uh, Red Star Red, Belgrade. Yeah, Partizan Belgrade, the uh, Red Star, excuse me, Red Star Belgrade. It's not Partizan, but Red Star Belgrade. They play them Thursday night. And, of course, there's going to be miserable weather here in Israel. They right. say lots of snow and rain. So we're going to see. Hopefully that game will uh, go off and uh, be played Thursday night, but we'll have to see. Uh, that's a team that Maccabi Tel Aviv should beat, uh, especially at home. I want to see Joe Alexander play. I'm looking forward to it, and uh, you know we'll see how they take they take these games. But it was really there was a game that they should have won against Panathinaikos. That was that was a real that was a real downer because they really really had that game in the bag, and then the fourth quarter they just fell apart. Now this uh, Thursday night, the game will be in Okeel, be at home. That game, you said Maccabi should win. I want to know if it's a must win. If they lose that game, will we see panic again, as we always see when Maccabi loses a couple, they ask for the coach to the coach's head. Will Guy go to somehow be in trouble if they drop the game on Thursday? No, at this point he will not be in trouble whatsoever. Uh, I think his position is pretty much safe. There, there should be no issues the rest of the way right now. Even if they really have a miserable go in this next round, they don't make it into the quarterfinals, uh, he will not be let go in the middle of the season. Will something happen after the season? That remains to be seen. But I think right now, even if, even if they lose, his position is safe. All right, and Joe Alexander, we talked about him briefly last week, and for those uh, who don't know, he's number eight overall draft pick, I believe back in 2008. What, is, what are your expectations? I know he's been banged up and he played in the D-League, but if he can be 70% of his potential, how much of a difference will that make for Maccabi Tel Aviv? 
You know, he gives you some good scoring. He can spread, help spread the floor. He has long arms, which are good. He's a decent defensive player. He can show offense. He had a game right before he was signed by Maccabi where I believe he scored 28 points or 35 points. The guy can score. There's no question. Why he didn't make it in the NBA, you know, there's so many players that make it and so many players just don't. Even the high draft picks. It's never a guarantee. You never know where these guys are going to land up, how they're going to play. Maybe his maybe his game is just better suited for Europe. That could be it. Maybe we're, we're going to find that out. He definitely came in with a good attitude, a positive attitude, and he knows that he's coming into a team that has a winning religion, and that's important. And he knows he's not coming to some small, little, you know, little European team but coming to the defending EuroLeague champions, and that's important. So he understands he understands what his standing and his position will be with the team, that he is coming to a, a champion. He is coming to a team that's going to give, and they always give their foreign players the best. And you will hear any foreign player tell you that Maccabi Tel Aviv is the best team. They take care of them like they're absolute gold. And uh, Jack Alexander, I'm sure, is going to look forward to that. And uh, I think it's a good opportunity for him. And we'll have to see how he produces. But I'm hoping, you never know, maybe this guy finds a spot here in Israel and he's with Maccabi for the next seven years. You just never know with Anthony Parker. Who knew? Who knew that he was going to be such a star? He developed so well here in Israel. And then he went back and had a, you know, an admirable NBA career and finished off in the NBA playing for the Raptors hmm. and the, the Cavaliers. I think that's all you can ask for. And, of course, Anthony Parker was maybe he was a bit older than Joe Alexander at the time, but probably not very much. But he really resurrected himself and was able to go to the NBA and be a, a, a positive player, just like Alan Anderson, who is a player in the NBA these days. He came to Israel. He was only with Maccabi for a year. But still, Alan Anderson – Paid his dues in Europe and then went back to the NBA. We'll have to see what happens with Joe Alexander. All right, Sports Rabbi, last question for you. The game on Thursday, Enokia against Red Star Belgrade. Give us your prediction. You're, you're usually spot on with these predictions, so I want to hear from you. What's going to happen on Thursday? I think Maccabi Tel Aviv is going to win by about 25 points. I All think right. that uh, this, is one of the, this is one of the weakest teams in, in the group. Maccabi Tel Aviv, with or without Kevin Smith, in general, they're starting to gel. Marquise Haynes had a terrific league game with scoring 27 points. So did Jeremy Pargo. He also scored 27 points uh, against the Foley Lot. They only won that game by two, and they were losing going to the fourth quarter. But nevertheless, they, uh, you know, they did a great job. They did a great job, and they're starting. These guys that they brought in at the beginning of the year are starting to produce. That's going to be the key, and I think with, even with or without Devin Smith, they're going to really win this game going away. All right, Sports Rabbi, thanks for your time. Everyone out there listening, if they want to find out more about you and your shows, where should they go to? Check me out on Twitter, at the Sports Rabbi, and uh, that's probably the best place, the easiest place to get to me. Shoot me an email as well, the Sports Rabbi at yahoo.com. And remember, folks, Ari Lewis is number one in the land, and I wish him the best in uh, all his future endeavors, and he is by far hands down, the number one sports host in this country. Uh, sports writer, thank you so much for the kind words. Appreciate it as always, and thank you for your time today. We will be in touch and uh, enjoy the game on Thursday. I know I will as well. All right, Dolly. Take care. Thank you so much. Be well. All right, that was the sports rabbi, Josh Halpin, breaking down what's going to happen with Kabi Tel Aviv. He likes them to win by 25 points on Thursday. 